You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show, where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, thefiveoptions.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks! Hello, everyone. This is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is... <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. We, it, it's just because it was our outro. And Instead we were... of intro. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we said, like, thank you guys for being here with us and bye-bye. Uh, so, no, this is just the beginning. Um, so it, it was mistaken, mistakenly our outro instead of intro. But guys, you know that this is a live show. So anything can happen. And usually a lot of things happen. So it's not really a surprise that something went wrong. But in reality, it didn't go wrong. It's that we are proving you that we are actually live on air. Right, Marta? Definitely, yes. I don't know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was very twisted. We, 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 need so. to, we need to agree on those things <laughs> prior to when we go live. Yes, okay, but yeah. uh, I feel like as if I was in a movie. You, you do? I do. Yeah, I feel like I'm in Monty Python, to be honest, most of my life. <laughs> Hello, Stoyan. Yes, you are laughing down there. Not do. down there, actually. You are <laughs> sitting at the door of oh my God. Yeah, they put me down, uh, like, I don't know, what's the studio, I have to be down in the app, like... We don't really have more chairs, plus we always like to imagine that our guests are our, are our slaves. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is going that in is the a, wrong that's direction. That's a different movie. <laughs> now, sometimes I'm saying things like this because I actually try to think if people believe me, and you know that sometimes they do, this is the most crazy... Part. But no, Stoyan sits with us at the table. We have our microphone set up and we actually regard all of our guests highly. Uh, I think we regard our guests way more higher than we regard ourselves. So, uh, Stoyan, you are not mistreated here in the studio. No, I'm not. And uh, we're going to have uh, Instagram proof uh, after the show. Marta just took a picture. Yeah, I just took a picture of Stoyan so that we can prove our guest that he's <laughs> not sitting anywhere down. He's actually quite up and also up with his mood, which is good news for us. Definitely. So today we are talking about a very interesting concept, I have to say, a very interesting idea that is as exciting as complicated, I believe that you can actually be the, be the hero of your own movie. So if we would take life as a book or a movie or any story and we would have the protagonist, the main character, then we can actually steer our life in a direction that we want to. We have a control over what is happening. So instead of from a mere spectator, we are becoming the hero of our life. Stoyan? Or maybe a director. Or maybe a director, actually, yeah? Stoyan, actually, that's your uh, concept or idea that you are trying to spread among the humans. So tell us, first of all, <laughs> that was not so funny. So tell us, first of all, hero or director? Because Marta had a great point. Maybe Marta is the director of your movie. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that would be very uh, freaky. And uh, I think you should be both, right? You should be like the hero and the director. I mean, think about movie? it, right? Think about it, like... We are all living our stories. And the thing about living your life is you, as you said, both uh, the director and the main character, you're the screenwriter as well. You're the producer, you're the camera guy, you're the person who is doing the edits. So you have to play all those roles. Um, and our society doesn't really give you the, the, the tools. Uh, in a way of, uh, you know, it's not part of our educational system to to maybe have a, this very specific toolbox of how to design your life. How do you deal with uh, adversity? How do you, do, how do you manage your personal finance? 
Um, how do you set goals? Uh, so sometimes it could be it could be difficult to 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 find yourself and to define who do you really are as a character, right? Mm-hmm. So this this whole reference to the society and stuff that smells a little bit like a conspiracy theory to me. Am I uh, somewhere near? I like conspiracy theories. So uh, why do you think, Stoyan, that our educational system or the way the society is constructed doesn't uh, open this idea that we actually can control our life or be the hero of our own life? I do believe uh, there is uh, certainly done some improvements lately, uh, you know, trends and how education should be uh, seen. But to a large extent, I think our educational system is... It's a little bit obsolete. It was serving very well in the, you know, the industrial revolution where we had to be told certain things, and uh, there were has the, the environment out out of our work wasn't so complicated. Um, the problem is it it's not fully updated to the reality of what we're facing right now. I was just reading an article the other day, and uh, and I I saw that according to a study, just in two thousand seventeen. We produced, I think, um, more data, more information than all the previous five thousand years combined. So oh, we wow. are we are faced with enormous amount of choices, and we have uh, all these devices that uh, you know, phones, laptops, iPads. Um, you speak to a lot of your friends and stuff, and you constantly compare yourself, and you want to try to be like what the perception of successful person is uh so so it's very challenging you know with with this all these choices how do i actually take the right choice Mm -hmm. i have all the opportunities to to live you know thousands of different lives to have uh you know many different career careers like i can date anybody i want like this there's so much choices which make it difficult for people to actually stay focused. Uh, I would agree with you definitely about staying focused or being able to choose the right path. But I also would make a claim that many people don't really see that many choices at all. Uh, many people have this one um, you know, like a, a traditional standard way on how the life should go and they even don't uh, they are not really conscious about it, you know. It's like, how 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 are we taught what is right or what we should do? So basically, we are born and raised in a certain culture where um, we all are forced to go to school. By the way, and if you are homeschooled, you are already a little bit maybe a weirdo, especially in in let's say in a country that I come from. I don't know anyone who was homeschooled, so everyone has to go to school, right? And then um, everyone should go to high school or whatever, uh, in um, my culture, in our culture, everyone, most of people should go to some higher education. Then you should get a well-paid job. Then you should get married by this and this age. Then you should sh- you should have children. Of course, now it's breaking a little bit. I think that now uh, people are more courageous in, okay, I will stay single longer or whatever. But it's happening only now. I remember 15 years ago, you know, um, in Poland, not having children by 30 was already considered like a... 15 years ago, I remember that, you know, you are already like kind of a weird person. What are you waiting for? So I think that many people, especially, let's say people that are a little bit older, uh, they don't even perceive those possibilities because there is this one way of living life or one or two ways. What do you think about this? I think that both of them are true because on one hand there is the path set out by the society or culture or whatever, but it doesn't change that in our everyday life we have millions of choices. That right now, even going and buying a liquid for washing your clothes uh, can be overwhelming because you have so many different brands and so on. So I think both of you, you know, anyway, were spot on. So good job. 
Oh, wow, we we were doing a great job, Stoyan. And I have just realized 10 minutes into uh, this show that we have not properly presented you, but we will have a chance because we already had Stoyan here and we had you for three episodes. So <laughs> for me, it's like you are shows regular. But uh, Stoyan Yankov, uh, maybe you remember him. He's our own personal productivity and performance guru here. And he gave us a lot of great tips about how to be more productive, achieve more and be happier in your life. Come back to those episodes. They are for free on our website and on our YouTube channel. But uh, Stoyan also have another side to himself, except of being a productivity and performance coach. You are also a keynote speaker, but also a filmmaker. And I guess that this is from where this whole idea come from of being hero of your own movie. However, I would like to hear it from you, from where this idea came from in your head. How, how did it start it? First of all, thank you for the nice introduction. You're very welcome. And uh, I don't think this is a, my idea. Like, I think people referred to this idea previously, you know, movie producers. Um, so I guess I might have picked it somewhere on the way, but it really clicked for me. Um, as you said, I'm a, I'm a film producer. And my dream was to be a movie producer, do movies with uh, you know Hollywood uh, people and so on. And actually, to some extent, I did. I, I did work on productions with um, pretty you know big productions with Hollywood people and and seeing how the industry works. And it kind of stuck me. When you're a professional filmmaker, you have all those tools how to design a movie. If I'm a professional, I have to follow certain guidelines. There are certain tools. There are certain things that we have to do. But we don't really have this kind of a, you know, um, commonly accepted guideline how to design your life. If I'm the hero of my story, if I'm the producer of my movie, how should I design my life? And how should I deal with suffering and adversity? And, and how should I take choices? And for me, it was more about if I see myself from perspective, if I'm the hero of my movie, I can get out of my head. It's not about me now. It's about the hero of my movie. How would I act if I'm the hero of my movie? If you only get one thing for this show today, I want it to be this one. See yourself as the hero of your movie and ask yourself next time you have a challenge, am I acting from a place of, of courage, of growth, from a place of... Um, from a heroic place, or am I acting as the ex the extra, as the the victim of my story? So just to get it straight, it's not only about being a hero of your movie in a, in a hero sense, like a, a you are because I get you know this word has double meaning in English at least. You know, actually in Polish it would have two meanings: hero as a someone heroic, and hero as the main cat, a character protagonist. Right. So you said something very interesting. You said that if we would like to remember something, is that you know we should place that hero in a place of growth and prosperity and courage. But then you said something which I, fi I find even more interesting. It allows you to get out of your own head. Meaning that if, for instance, as you, Marta, said, you are a director of your movie and the hero of your movie, you cannot be at the same time both. So, for instance, if you would look at yourself as you are a character of a movie, right, or a story, if I'm following you correctly, then you can actually be more detached yet mindful about how you would design a path of that hero or a plot for that hero. Am I getting your point? You're totally getting my point. And it's also about when, you, when you're constructing a story um, from ancient times, not just movies, but the, the most ancient stories, there is a certain structure of the story. There are different story structures, but let's take a look at the normal three-act story structure, right? You have a character, they have this opening in which usually there is some incident happening. They go through some certain challenge, uh, something is taken from them, or they realize what they want to fight for, right? And, and then they define what's this purpose, what is this big meaning? Just a week ago, I watched um, a new movie on Netflix called uh, Outlaw King. 
Have you guys seen it or? No. And is this a commercial? <laughs> is, no, I'm, I'm not uh, affiliated. I'm not making commission. Okay. What's the title of the movie? One Outlaw more time. King. Outlaw it's King. About, um, it's about uh, Scotland. Uh, it's basically what happens after Brave, uh, Braveheart. Yeah. Uh, for Bruce. I think it's called Bruce. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> Anyway. For me, Braveheart is Mel. So, you know. It's Mel, yes. Of <laughs> course. Uh, so, basically... The reason I'm, I'm mentioning this is it's a very clearly defined the character. You see the character at the beginning, you get to know the character, and then five minutes watching the movie, you already know this character has one purpose. He wants to free Scotland from the English. He has a one clearly defined purpose. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the story, if you watch the movie, you will see that all his actions are predicated by his purpose. And this is his biggest priority. Um, and I, I like to see my, my story in the same way. If I define where I want to be, what my purpose is, what I'm fighting for, then the short-term challenges and adversities are just a natural part of my way. I will go through pain, especially if I have a big goal. I will go through a lot of pain. And, and I like to... I like to talk about that a lot as well. How, what is your relationship with suffering, right? What is your relationship with pain? Uh, because I personally, I think I was told to, to try to avoid pain and suffering. If you see pain, get away. And life is about happy moments and about sometimes dark times and pain. And it's about how do we deal with these times, right? Do we see them as a natural part of the way? Um, a friend of mine... I was going from a, through a dark time and he called me and we had this conversation and he's like, dude, you should be proud of yourself. This is just the price that you're paying so you can live the life that you want. So you can slay the dragon or whatever. Like you got to pay the price. If you are dreaming big, if you have high ambitions, sure, it's going to be a lot more challenging. But I like to see it not as pain and suffering. I like to see it as this is just the price that I pay if I want to live there. Okay, I, I, I have to say it's very interesting and there are two parts of me that are torn in two different directions when I hear it. Because on one uh, hand, I would be afraid that this kind of, that everyone would perceive it as if I want to uh, be great, I have to suffer for it. So it's very, you know what I mean? It's very like a, a Jesus Christ kind of approach, uh, like that there is always a suffering in glory. Um, you know, it's it's a very actually um, aligned with our uh, also religious, you know, main religious views. You know, there is every like a, even savior mm. was suffering and had to sacrifice to achieve this greater good. However, when I think about the movie or a book, there is no interesting book and there is no interesting movie if the character doesn't either suffer or go through challenge or obstacle. Because then what the hell are we reading, right? So, yeah, he woke up and then he did this and then he was success and then he was success and then he was success. He achieved his goal and this is the end of the book or the end of the movie. No one would like to read it. No one would like to watch it because it's boring, it's dull, right? So I have those two uh, thoughts because I wouldn't like to glorify suffering. You know what I mean? I do, I do. But uh, on the other hand, I would maybe see the... I don't know, Marta, actually, I'm curious about your opinion. I would maybe rather see it not as glorifying suffering, but being aware that if you need to get some, it's not like a price you have to pay, but you have to gain some skills with coping with certain things through maybe suffering or through challenges in order to get there. What do you think? I think that this is a very um, deep and very difficult topic. So I will try to be as concise and short on my answer as possible. When it comes to suffering, I have recently been thinking about it because I also agree we should not think that if we want to achieve something big, 
we necessarily that it has to be a struggle that it has to be suffering because in this way some people maybe can get discouraged because they will think i'm setting myself for suffering so i agree with you i would also not like to think this way but at the same time when you are staying where you are you're also suffering you're just suffering in smaller doses but like smaller constant doses if you are not moving out of your comfort zone so this is where a lot of my considerations to suffering come, whether you are courageous enough to maybe take upon some challenges and obstacles and possible suffering on your way to greatness, or do you prefer those small doses of pain in your everyday comfort zone? Because I think what I'm trying to say here is that suffering and pain and obstacles and challenges, they are a part of our life, no matter how we would like to avoid it or how we would like to get out of it, we can't. Because otherwise, how would we know that we are also great and good and happy and in love, yeah? If we did not have the other mirror <laughs> to actually show it to us. So that was my considerations. I know that it's not, uh, you know, actually, entirely that was answer, that, Rose. No, that was actually freaking awesome. I would say fucking if I wouldn't say freaking, but I just said fucking. So what the hell am I saying? <laughs> this is a, this this is an this R is rated. Show. Yeah, no, you we can use. I'm sorry, but we can use explicit language. We have uh, agreed with uh, management, and they said we have a green light. But I wanted to say, Marta, this was actually very much on point. And uh, Stoyan, I hope you agree with us. I actually totally agree. I, I wasn't trying to push suffering as uh, something you should aim for. Mm -hmm. um, I think what Marta says uh, and what you say as well is, is what I believe in. It's more about what is my relationship when this thing happened. And you might have a not a huge goal, right? Maybe you just want to live a peaceful life, but you're still going to go through dark times and you have to learn how to deal with it, right? From what place am I approaching it? The, the problems, the challenges, the dark times, am I showing up as a, as a hero from a place of strength, looking for a solution, looking for the learning, finding the right meaning that will help me to, to go through it faster or more effectively, or am I playing the victim role? Why is it happening to me? And of course, we are human beings. We, we have our days and sometimes you got to feel down and you feel sorry for yourself. It's, it's okay. But how, how long do I want to stay there, right? And think about the movies, right? You said it really well. The How interesting would be a movie if you just see a character and he goes to the shop and he goes home and watch TV and like, it's the same with life, right? How compelling is your story, right? What, what do you want your life to be about? Do you want to have a compelling, interesting masterpiece kind of life? Um, driven by what you do, what you stand for, or do you want to have a more, you know, just a, just a mediocre story? Well, I would say that uh, a message to the people this time from me, actually, before we will go to the second part of our wonderful show, which is called The Wisdom from Google. Uh, or the wisdom from internet and I have found a couple of interesting uh, facts or thoughts that I would like to throw here on the table and for Stoyan and Marta to pick it up and give their opinion but before that I would like to say uh, to our dear listeners like if you would have to watch your life imagine that your life is a movie that someone plays for you in a cinema right and if you are sitting there in front of a TV and watching your life, if you start to yawn or you are so bored that you fall asleep within the first 15 or 20 minutes, then think if you really want to live a life like this because you have only one. Well, um, some sources say we have a lot. <laughs> That depends on what you believe in, if you believe in reincarnation. But let's say in this body, in the form we are, we have only one life. So how would you feel if you would fall asleep watching your own story of your own life? And if it doesn't sound cool for you, then freaking change it. And I will say freaking because I used my fuck limit and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't yet though. So Yeah, you, you still have yours. Uh, so that would be the message that I would have to everyone. And guys, are you ready for wisdom number one from the internet? 
Oh yeah. Let's go. Oh yeah, and this is uh, I paraphrased the entire paragraph in an article. So, people reject the thought of being able to create their life because that would mean that they have a full responsibility for it and there's no one left to blame for everything that happens. True or false? Stoyan? Some people. I couldn't say everybody, mm -hmm. uh, but I would say there's many people who decide to play uh, the victim role and blame everything else and point fingers and everything else. So I believe um, that's definitely a mindset. That it, I don't think it's these people are like this. It's more like they just decide to act from such a place. Okay, Marta? I think that maybe it de it's because we had all these discussions today already with uh, our welcome, guests. Yeah. yeah, and also it just brings me so much to awareness part because I think in order to be in a place where you actually take a decision to play as a victim, you are already in a good place. <laughs> I think the problem is that there are many people who, for whom it's not even uh, available yet that it's actually even a decision to that you can come, uh, that you can respond to it as a victim or as a hero. So I think when you already have some consciousness <laughs> and you just des decide to be the victim in that situation, you are on a path to getting the responsibility. But I do know that, yes, I do know some people and I uh, have to be here vulnerable that the younger version of me would have often gone to a victim mode. I don't think I ever was like a full on victim, but I definitely have been seeing many things happening to me. Mm -hmm. uh, previously. So I think it's a matter of awareness. Yeah, I also think it's a matter of awareness. However, this uh, sentence, because it was the entire article uh, about people, because, you know, it was like, uh, are you able to create your life? I think that was some sort of a title, right? And the article, the author was claiming that, you know, even if you will tell people that they can um, create their life or they could have um, let's say, control a certain aspect of their life. They will many times try to find excuses that no, this is not, no, I wasn't able to. And they will try to reject it because in reality, they are afraid to take that responsibility because then they would have to have a backlash, uh, not backlash, but the flashback mm -hmm. to their entire life and all the decisions they made. And they would have to take responsibility from all the mistakes that before they were blaming on other people, circumstances, and so on, so on. So that was actually a whole interesting article about this, that, you know, sometimes if you tell people you can create your life, they will say no because they cannot handle what they have already screwed up in the past and take responsibility for that. Yeah. So now the second very wise thought from the internet. And it goes like this. Life is like a computer game. Your circumstances and the attributes of your player, meaning background, personality, strengths and weaknesses, have been set up. But it's up to you how you play the game. What do you think about this one? Stoyan? The same with the metaphor with the movie, you know. I think it has certain limitations, but what's most important is to give you a metaphor. If this gives you a metaphor, that helps, helps you to take more right choices and to, to do the right things, use it. That's, that's, that'll be my take on it. Okay, Marta, what do you think? I think that, uh, you know, that's in some way a matter of your belief system, because some people, they actually believe, you know, that before you come to this life, you select yourself, the body, the circumstances, the things that uh, you will, that will be the most useful for you to get your life lesson. So, for example, something like that speaks to me that that makes sense. Uh, when we start talking about computer games, I get a little bit discouraged because I don't like computer games. <laughs> okay. Oh, what about board games? Life is like a board game. Life is like <laughs> a card game. Because the con I, I, I will tell you that mm -hmm. my take on this, first of all, is like, okay, Stoyan, go first. No, I mean, uh, what I like about it is I think life is about 
finding the right balance between what you can control and what you cannot control, right? And or actually realizing what you can and cannot control, right? Yeah. So so it's about well this there are certain things I can control. I can improve my skills. I know I can control to a certain extent who are the people around me, how do I spend my time, um what is the intentions that I put in a certain certain situation. And then there is the other part that there are certain things that will happen. You can't control everything. You might do your best and things are just still going to go to shit. Yeah, like for instance, there can be a, a thunder, storms, lightning, your house can burn down, you can have an accident that you cannot control, right? Do you mean that kind of things? We think about the heroes of movies, right? What, they have it all figured out? No. No, they go and do, they do a lot of choices that are not necessarily right. They are confused for a big part of the movie, right? Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to slay this dragon or whatever they want to do. You have something with dragons now, don't you? Because <laughs> that's the second or third time I hear about slaying the dragon. I have a thing for dragons, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Game of Thrones fans? Fun? To some extent, yes. Are you watching? I mean, to be honest, yes and no. I love the universe. I'm a fantasy kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time... Sometimes it's a little bit too much, uh, the, the intrigues and the, uh, you know, the, the, the characters have a lot of values that I don't necessarily want to relate to. Mm -hmm. So that when I watch the movie, I kind of feel like certain parts of my brain starts triggered. And I'm like, I don't want to be like these characters. So I try to, you know, I listen to you guys, you know, podcasts and uh, reading books, watching entrepreneurs or, or people that I want to be like uh, so I can frame my mind so you want to tell me that you are consciously avoiding game of thrones because you think it might have a bad influence of certain parts of your personality that could be triggered am i getting this correct absolutely and wow. this is <laughs> and this is to expense of me loving fantasy and just loving the story and so on so it's a uh, uh, but th this is actually this is one of those moments when you are actually creating or designing your your life because you are you you love it but you make a conscious choice to resign from it that's why i am more malicious and evil than you are because i watch it <laughs> what else do you watch uh, a lot of weird things trust me that's true but but i love game of thrones and i'm waiting for the last uh, for the next season but that's why i asked about it because you know dragons dragons everywhere uh, but it, my take on this computer game stuff i actually like it i like it a lot and it's because, uh, surprise, surprise, Marta, I loved computer games. I was playing computer games. I also love board games. And you know, at the beginning of the game, you are either given a character or in a board, uh, board game, you choose a character and you get all those things, you know, like strengths, uh, power, magic, whatever. You have different stuff and you have a description of a character and your character is having a certain setup, which you cannot just you know um, overcome but that character can still win the game that's the whole thing it doesn't matter what character you will choose you still have a chance to win the entire board game so i really like this approach it's really cool because you can be the wizard or you can be the warrior or like whatever everybody has some certain strengths right so it's about being aware of what my strengths are and betting on my strengths, right? And then figuring out what's the mission I'm fighting for. The thing is in the game, things are already predefined for you. You kind of know what's the goal. You kind of know what's your strengths. So I think what I'm missing from the video games is, is the awareness part. Mm -hmm. So how do I get aware about these things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, give give artificial intelligence five to ten more years and then you will see how aware those guys will become. Yes, I also watch a lot of Terminator kind of movies. So, yeah, here's my another secret. But let's go to the point number three, guys. Very curious about what you think. This time I will start with Marta. So she will be. Yes, I can see she's ready. Everything happens for a reason. Some things are written in the stars and you need to go through them in your life. 
Well, What's your take? My take is that it's definitely helpful to have this approach in life, to think that everything happens for a reason. And whether you, whether it's true or not, you can make a reason out of it. Meaning that if something happens to you, whether you believe that some things were set in the stars and you are following some kind of life lessons or destiny or something or not, it doesn't actually matter that much. But if something happens and you look for reasoning, you make the reasoning out of it for yourself and you treat it as a lesson, you, it's a win-win, <laughs> no matter what the other part of the belief is. This is actually quite fantastic because now when I think about it, isn't this what it means to be a creator of your life? You actually create your own meaning. You basically, you know, it's like uh, all I'm trying to do with those facts now that we are facts, wise thoughts from Google, from Uncle Google, uh, is to open a discussion because, you know, um, I think this is a goddamn good point, Marta, that basically the the reason or a lack of reason that's in your own power. And we live in our heads in the end of the day. We live in our heads. So if I can make or pinpoint a reason, deeper meaning to everything that happens to me, that's how I will live my life and I will see everywhere a sign or a clear direction, right? And if I want then I want. And that would be another version of my life, right? What do you think, Stoyan? I think Marta said it in a way that I can't really top it up. It was it was just spot on. Um, uh, we I don't, don't want you to, to top it up. <laughs> we, what, what do you think about it? Uh, I definitely well, agree. Actually, I think it's a your personal opinion. Does everything happen for a reason? What, how do you feel personally about this topic? I really like the the, the point she is taking with the meanings. Um, I don't know, does it? I have no idea, but I can always find a meaning that will be either empowering or it's going to put me down. Mm -hmm. So the more times I choose to find the right meaning, the right reason, the more likely it's going to help me and I'm going to have a better quality life. So the more I'm aware, the better for me. And uh, so that's that's my take on it. Okay. My opinion is, or my take, is that everything happens for a reason. Surprise, surprise. I have seen so many times situations that only when I look back in my life, things make sense the way they happened. However, someone could, of course, challenge me and say, Jana, but you don't know what would happen if that wouldn't happen. Maybe you would be even in a better place than you are right now. But I think that's actually my call to decide what I believe in, right? And that's the whole... That's the whole idea of this. I mean, if I if I look backwards, creation. if I yeah. look backwards, uh, I can always find so many. When something happens, right, and if it's a negative, short-term, you know, outcome, you start for looking into why is this happening for me? I did my best. Everything was blah blah blah. But as Marta said, if you look backwards, few years after, it's like whoa. So good I did that. So good I had this breakup so I can find this other person. So good I broke my leg so I wasn't called to go in the army. You know, this you can always find a great meaning, great purpose, great learning in everything. And if you if you create this habit for your mind when something bad happens to try to focus your attention into well what's the learning? What am I grateful for? So I could definitely recognize that every single one of us had that breakup that was a blessing, right? <laughs> yes, that, I think that is one of those most common things like, I dodged the bullet here. <laughs> you know, I was I was so heartbroken five years later. Thank God that someone made him or her, you know, to dump me because otherwise that would be a disaster. So that's just a general thought. And I think that most of our listeners would also recognize that. But guys, what do you think about this one? You attract what you think. If something bad happened to you, it means you had to attract it somehow with your thoughts. Boo. So that is uh, the so-called love of attraction. Lo love. I like, love of attraction. I like more love, love of attraction I than also law like of attraction. Love. <laughs> I love the attraction. <laughs> no, it's actually the law of attraction. So Stoyan, I will give you the... Okay, Stoyan, all right. Yes, gentlemen first. Well, I... And you that's know... A, that's a tough one. Yeah. I think um, 
I do believe in this actually. I do believe you're attracting um, to a very high extent your thoughts will attract certain uh, certain situations, and you can also you can see it from a more spiritual, um, you know, metaphysical kind of way that you don't have to find a reason why that happens, or you can see it from a more scientific point of view and say, well, you know, um, your brain has this side that's called reticular activating system, which is basically trying to from all the information and choices, trying to focus the attention on the most important things. And the more you're thinking of the right things, the more your brain is focusing on these things. So you you notice them more, uh, you pay more attention and, and then things happen. But I think it's, it's something more beyond the science. Uh, I don't know what it is, but, but I have a lot of examples from my life when I, when I have the certain right state and frequency and, and intention and in some weird universal um, unexplainable unexplainable weird way, way uh, somehow things match and it's like oh my god you know and then the opposite um, you have some negative thoughts and you're like I hope I don't lose my luggage <laughs> and then you lose your <laughs> and then you mm -hmm. it's almost like daring the universe like yeah I hope I won't lose my luggage. Please, stop, please. No, 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 no. What are you doing? And it's gone. Yeah, Marta, what do you think? Your hell. Hell. Hell of a question. Hell of a question, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good that Stoyan went first on this one. <laughs> You're no, welcome. I have to say that I am in a transition in my uh, love or hate relationship with this, in my toxic relationship with law of attraction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's a... So that's what is a, the stage of your relationship? Yes, so exactly. the stage of the relationship is that I would gladly take the positive part of it and like really leave behind the negative part of it. So. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of worked both ways, huh, according to the yeah, theory. Yeah, exactly. So that's my problem with it, yeah. If it only worked for the good stuff, I would love it, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay. I, I can see that this also is to some degree a matter of awareness because I can see in my life people who are aware of that and I really see some big manifestors in uh, my surroundings and I can see that it works. When it comes to me, I have often been saying, luckily it has not really worked that well for me, that law, because I had quite a lot of crap in my head and luckily it has not materialized in the real life. So I have always had that not, I have not figured it out yet completely because I've had quite a lot of, like really a lot of negative thoughts in my head, yet my life is not proving this way. So there is something more than just the thought. So I haven't figured out yet because According to what has been happening in my head for many years, it, it, it is different now. But what was happening in my head for many years, I should have had a very bad life, according to law of attraction. But that's not true. I've had a wonderful life. So that's where I'm struggling. Okay, Stoyan, you want to say something? Because I saw a waving finger that usually is a sign <laughs> that I have something to add. Thank yes? you for sharing everything with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there are no cameras here, so I want people to really feel what's feel happening. Feel it, yes. 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 No, but I, I wanted just to add that it's it could be dangerous if you take this law of attraction as, uh, you know, very extreme. Uh, and I, it's something that I want to emphasize. I think if you use it as a strategy, more thoughtfully, awareness, you know, that can help me, but not like, you know, I'm going to start thinking positively and my life is going to be amazing. I'm going to sit on my couch, eat my popcorn, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, maybe some people could get some results, I don't know, or just be in their delusion of bubble and feel good about themselves. But I think it's just about, well, let me have this positive outlook at things but not to fly too much uh, without having a backup of this, right? Like, it's also about taking action. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I, I think I get your point, and I think it's also dangerous to get too stressed out about this, you know, because then you get into paranoia, whatever negative thing I think it will materialize, and you know I will die by the end of the week. But, guys, I will have the last fact for you, but before that, because it's a little bit of a different nature. And uh, with all those facts, I was basically trying to find something that would tell us, 
if we can be the heroes of our movie or not. Can we create our life or not? So, you know, if it would be true that we attract what we think, it would mean that we can be the authors of our life because by our thoughts, we can attract certain things. But then if everything happens for reasons and things are written in the stars, then how much can we actually, uh, you know, uh, control if some things are destined for us? And then uh, maybe life is like a computer game. So things are predefined. Some things are in our power. Uh, but do we really want to take responsibility for that? Because having that responsibility is too tough. But for people who are ready to change their life, there is another interesting fact, and that is the last one. And this is from Mel Robbins. You know Mel Robbins a little bit, maybe personally, no? She's an author of a book, The Five Seconds Rule, and one time she has said, there is a window that exists between the moment you have an instinct to change and your mind killing it. It's a five second window and it exists for everyone. So basically she says, that we all have an instinct to change, to do something great, courageous, but our mind will kill that idea within five seconds if we don't do it immediately, because then it will start to rationalize and scare us away, basically tell us that it will, we are failures, this will not work, and so on. True or false? From your own experience. I can share something. Yeah. So I really Sherry. have I really have uh, seen that in my life because I was for example sitting in my in the office and daydreaming about quitting my job. Mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself I can just stand up from my desk and go to my boss and tell her I'm really sorry I can't do this anymore I want to quit my job. I was thinking about it so many times and I could feel that window I could really feel it that I could just stand up right now and go and quit my job. And that's true after, I don't know if it's five seconds, three seconds or 33 seconds, but five is a good number. So of course it is. after that, of course, I was starting to rationalize that I have three children, luckily not five, because I don't think I could, <laughs> <laughs> I could survive with five children with my skill set. And uh, <laughs> people who have five children, I really admire them, like really, they are heroes, no matter if they take that responsibility or not, Seriously, they are heroes. we should give yes. them medals, really. And, uh, and I, it, ha it happened so many times. I could feel that empowerment. I could feel, yes, I can stand up and go and quit my job. And then I was always starting to rationalize, like, no, you should really think about it. But what will you do next? You haven't really yet figured out who you want to be when you grow up. And, you know, a lot of those things. And I really believe that this is true. What I don't know yet is if that always acts in our favor. I don't know if that was good, if that would have been good for me to react to that instinct and go quit my job. Or if it was better for me to wait until it's my absolutely conscious decision where I go with full alignment, I go tell my manager, I'm really sorry, I have really thought about it, I have my things, you know, in order and I'm really ready to resign because then there is, I feel happy when I've done it. And I think if I have reacted to that five seconds of courage, I would have probably ended up in some sort in the same place at the end of the day, but I would have gone through extreme fear after that. I would have probably regretted that decision like hell because, you know, I just took it as an impulse. I didn't mm -hmm. take this big decision as my, you know, as a conscious decision and so on. So I haven't figured it, figured it out yet because probably at some point I would have ended up in the same place. That was the right decision for me. Mm -hmm. because I ended up doing it anyway, right? So I haven't figured out yet if it's always good for us to take these five seconds of courage or not. Interesting. Okay, uh, I would have to think about it because I, I actually never really thought about this part where you could do something on an impulse of a courage and then regret it because you were not ready. Very interesting thought. But guys, as we have 11 minutes left, we have to jump into the questions that we have answered. Uh, not answered. We have asked our Facebook listeners and we will ask those questions. To, not to Stoyan. 
Sto we'll ask Stoyan those questions. See, my English is getting a bit rusted around 50 minutes of recording. Because you're around two Eastern Europeans, oh, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So I will ask you five questions. And is that Marta, like a speed session? Boom, boom, Not boom. speed session, but I would like to ask, to get an answer in one, two sentences mm. from you, from Marta. That's and then, And then I will reveal what was the most popular answer among our listeners. Do we have a deal? Guys, let's go. Stoyan, do you have a vision of your life in one year? I do have a vision. I don't know if it's exactly one year. I have a vision maybe for a two-year period. So you do. You do have a vision. Marta? I have a vision. Yes. Yes, Marta has a vision. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm very happy that you both have <laughs> visions. Some kind of vision, you know. <laughs> Some kind of vision. <laughs> And maybe that's the answer that was the most popular answer among our listeners because 77% of the voters have said that they have a sort of <laughs> vision. I more or less know where I want to be in a year. And then we have 8% saying, yes, I know exactly how my life will look like in a year. Well, congratulations to those guys. Then I have 8% for haha. No, I don't even have a vision of tomorrow. <laughs> and then we have 8% for no, I like to live my life spontaneously and get surprised by, by what future holds for me. Interesting, very romantic, maybe quite irresponsible, but yeah. Now the second question, Stoyan. Do you believe in destiny? That's a deep one. Um, I mean, I, I believe there are certain things, if we go back to the things that are happening for a reason or things are written down, I believe one might say there are some certain bigger picture things that might have to happen. I don't know. But for me, in order to maximize my human experience in this place, I, I like to believe I have a certain control in, this, uh, in my story. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are certain things that, that will happen no matter what. I don't know. What can I get out of it, right? Like, how can I live my life on my terms, even if it's delusional? I, I don't know. I can't prove it, right? But even if it's delusional, if I decide that I'm the producer and the director, then I can take actions and, and potentially at least believe that I can, I can live the life that I want. And uh, yeah, that, that would be a more meaningful experience. So just to make it clear, because you have just <laughs> put so much one, one around it, <laughs> rather yes or rather no, because the explanation was great, but I cannot get like, what are you going into? <laughs> Do you believe in destiny? Yes or no? Rather yes or rather no? Not to be a totally defined. Rather no. Rather no. Marta? So what I believe is that I believe in destiny, but I believe also in free will choice. So I think there are some things in my life that have shown me that there, there is some kind of destiny because the things that happen, like, for example, my husband, the chances of me meeting him and creating the relationship that we have are rather low. So I think that destiny May, may, there may be something like destiny, but I definitely believe that I have a free will choice. So maybe a destiny was for me to meet my husband, but I have a free will choice whether I will choose him for my life partner or not. That's my answer. Okay, that's actually quite a good one. So now I will tell you what was the most popular answer, guys. Probably something like you were trying to do here. 57% said kind of. I think some things are meant to happen. 40% said totally things are written in the stars. Another 14% said I believe we create our destiny. 7% said I don't think uh, and I ask myself this. I don't know and I ask myself this question from time to time. And 7% no, I believe destiny is an excuse used by some people to justify things they cannot explain and now we are going to question number three and here i already know your answer so this time really kind of yes kind of no do you believe in love law of attraction stoyan yes marta love hate relationship no i'm joking yes yes okay perfect do you want to know what our listeners thought 
46%. Yes, I do. We attract what we think. 15%. Haha, I think it's a nice fairy tale, but there's no scientific proof it works. 15% said, I don't know, the idea appeals to me, but I tried to use it and it didn't work. 8% said, what the hell is that? Another 8% said, I believe that uh, in life we get what we deserve, but law of attraction is too far-fetched concept for me. And 8% answer, no, it's bullshit. So now number four, if your life was a movie, what genre would it be, Stoyan? I guess in this stage of my life, it's going to be action adventure with hints of comedy. Okay, Marta? No freaking idea. I was trying to answer that question in the survey and I had no freaking idea. Okay, we didn't even had that. So I would say... That's why I didn't answer, because there was no answer like that. No idea. What, what about you, Anna? My, uh, my... Your movie. My movie right now... Uh, it would be a, uh, I think it would be a thriller. <laughs> I'm thrilled by the shit that's happening lately. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm getting, uh, I don't know if there is a genre like a, uh, uh, surprise on surprise, kicking su other surprise in a butt kind of thing. Uh, but I will tell you what I gave to our listeners and maybe I will find my, I will try to choose from this. So 40% said a coming to an age inner journey type of movie, 30%, 1,000 episode long soap opera. That's actually me like two years ago. Art, 10% uh, said art film or one of those foreign movies that Americans just don't understand. 10% said not sure about a specific genre, but it would be definitely R rated. And 10% answered black comedy. So if I would have to choose from this five, I think I would still go for soap opera. Yeah. Guys, the last question. Do you believe you can control, control your life? Quick answer. Yes or no? Or Stoyan? To a certain extent. To a certain extent. I like this answer. Marta? Yes, you can control some things and no, you can't control others. Wonderful. <laughs> so, 64% of our respondents have answered, you can only control yourself, but you cannot control your circumstances. 14% answer, no, life is totally unpredictable and you never know what's going to happen. There's no way to control it. The other 14% said, yes, you can control your life by using the law of attraction. And 7% answered, yes, definitely. With a great plan and preparation, you can control your life to a great extent. I really want to meet that person, by the way, <laughs> or person. 7%, it's either one or two because we had some respondents here. Yeah, I really want to see because I, I don't know if it's even possible to control your life with a great plan. But uh, Stoyan, the last thoughts for this show, because we are disappearing from air in a round. I'll try to be quick. I think based on that... Don't um, worry, Julian will just cut you out. Great, <laughs> great. But I just wanted to elaborate on that one. I think if we assume that we can control some things, we cannot control some other things. For simplicity, I have this tool and maybe people can use it. I ask people, what do you more worry most before you go to bed? Right? Mm -hmm. There's usually two or three things. Then you write them down and you try to say from one to ten, how much do I worry? Well, eight. Okay. And then you write down things in three columns. First one, things I can control. Second one, things I can influence. And third one, things I cannot control. And then the things that I can control, what can I do about it? The things that I, I cannot control, what kind of meaning do I want to find in it? And the things that I can influence, it's, you know, you can, you can see how can I influence the situation, but, but let go of control. I think this is a very, very good exercise, Stoyan. It's a really interesting thing. I think I might even try it. And I don't say it often. So, guys, thank you so very much for this wonderful live show. Stoyan, thank you for being here again. I hope you enjoyed the show. You did? Did it you? It was awesome. Okay, it was awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Marta, thank you very much for your wonderful golden thoughts and moments of humor and outburst, out, outburst of laughter from Stoyan when you were talking. And by the way, I love your hats. 
yeah, that's not our heads, <laughs> but good idea. We will take a picture and post it on Facebook too, guys. Yes. So thank you very much, Marta. Thank you, Stoyan. Guys, have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye. Bye. See you guys. You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show, where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks! <laughs>